Maker Snack. Installing CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi. Hello makers, we're going to install the magnificent CircuitPython libraries on our Raspberry Pi. Now Python is the programming language we're going to be using to code our robot. We're going to write that Python code and run it on our Raspberry Pi, but the Raspberry Pi out of the box doesn't know how to work with motors and the things that we're going to need to power our robot. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the Raspberry Pi and we're also going to install some additional software to allow us to write Python code to work with and control robot parts. So if you followed our previous tutorial in, in this series, we're going to assume that you've already configured your Raspberry Pi, you've updated it with the latest software. If not, just go and check out the earlier video. And what we'll do here, just to show you the steps, is we're going to be performing them on a Mac. So we're going to open the terminal program, we'll log into your Pi, we'll install or upgrade the PIP3 utility, which is a, a tool for upgrading and installing software. Uh, we're also going to configure two communication protocols, one called I2C and another called SPI. We'll exit the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, we'll install the Python 3 libraries, reboot the Pi, and Adafruit also has a wonderful little test program in Python 3. So we'll also enter that and run that just to make sure that everything is working fine. So let's get at it. So CircuitPython is developed by Adafruit, and Adafruit has wonderful tutorials on CircuitPython. We're actually going to be using a number of the steps on installing CircuitPython libraries on Raspberry Pi. So why don't you take a moment to open a web browser, use your favorite search engine, and find this page, and then we'll continue. What this will enable us to do is just to copy and paste some of the things that we would normally type in, just to make sure that there are no typos. And in fact, what we've done in the prior video is we've already gone through and did the apt-get update and the apt-get upgrade on our Pi. So the next step that we're going to be doing is this one down here, which is the sudo pip3 install. So since this is the first line that we're going to use, why don't you highlight that in command C to copy it. Now before we can enter this into the terminal mode, we've got to log into our Raspberry Pi. So minimize your browser, turn on your Pi. I'm going to open up terminal on my Mac, so I'm going to do command space and then type terminal into spotlight and press enter. The terminal program runs and we can do an SSH login. So remember the command is ssh space and then pi pi at and then the name of your Raspberry Pi. And remember in the last video I renamed mine PiBot and then you do dot local. And after you press enter you put in your password and you should be logged in. Now you should see your terminal command prompt has the name of your Raspberry Pi. And so now we're going to install a program that lets us install other programs. So what I want you to type in is sudo, that's for super user do, space, apt, remember that's the advanced package tool, dash, get, get, space, install, space, python3 dash pip. Again, all lowercase. So what pip is, is it's just a, uh, a software program that installs uh, packages of, of other software programs. Pip is sort of this recursive name that means pip installs Python. Um, and the version that we're going to use is pip3, which is the version that works with Python 3, which is the version of Python that we'll be using as well. So just press enter and the installation will happen. Um, I've accelerated the installations here so you don't have to sit and wait for mine to install. You'll be prompted for some confirmation to use up some of the disk space on your Raspberry Pi. Just type in a capital Y, press enter, and the installation continues. Again, I'm showing the accelerated installation here. And when you get back to the prompt, right here is where you're going to go ahead and paste what we copied from the Adafruit Python installation page. So this should say when you paste it in sudo space pip3 space install space dash dash upgrade space setup tools, press enter, and it's just going to finish installing all of the things we need to continue installing software. And again, I've accelerated the installation here, so you don't have to wait for mine. So now when you're done and you're back at the prompt, I'd like you to open up your web browser again. Now, if you scroll down, the next step in the instruction refers to installing, you can see under here where it says enable I2C and SPI. Uh, that's actually, the first one is pronounced I squared C and SPI. Those are two mechanisms that the Pi is going to be using in order to communicate with things that are attached to it, like motors and sensors. So let's first make sure that our Pi knows about I squared C. So I'm going to right click where it says enable I squared C and I'm going to select open in a new tab and then I'll click on this new tab in order to be able to look at the configuring I squared C instructions. And now we see two instructions that we're going to copy and paste into the command prompt to continue to do some more installation for us. I'm going to highlight this first one that goes from sudo to smbus, copy it with the command C, 
then return to the terminal program, paste it in with a command V and press enter. And this will do the first part of the installation that we need. Now, even though this setup is tedious, we only have to do it once per Pi that we're setting up for our projects. And when we get to the command prompt, we can return to the web page that we were at previously about the I squared C configuration, highlight the second line here, which goes from sudo to I squared C dot tools, copy that with a command C, return to terminal, paste that in with a command V, press enter, and the second installation will happen. Now returning to our instructions, the next thing that we need to do is run the raspy config program. So I'm just gonna highlight sudo space raspy dash config. I'm gonna copy that with a command C. I don't need these instructions anymore, so I'm just gonna minimize my browser, and I'm gonna paste uh, the instructions in, press enter, and that'll launch and run the raspy config configuration tool. Now, when we're at the main menu here, press your down arrow until we get to interfacing options. And when you're at interfacing options, then press enter to select it. And then in there, press the down arrow to go to I2C, which is I squared C, press enter there as well. And then it'll ask you if you wanna go ahead and enable I squared C, press enter on the yes. Your screen will flash, press enter on the highlighted okay. And we're done installing I squared C and we're gonna be returned to the main menu for the raspy config tool. Now this I squared C is one popular mechanism the Pi will use to communicate with things that are attached to it. And I squared C stands for inter-integrated circuit. You really didn't need to know about that or really the specifics of I squared C's implementation, but do know um, some things that you'll attach to your Pi will communicate using I squared C. Others will communicate using this thing called SPI, which stands for serial peripheral interface. And so when we program our Pi, we wanna make sure that it knows how to speak I squared C as well as SPI. SPI. So again, that's what we're doing right now. We're setting up these protocols, which are means of communication so that we can use these in our Python programs. So to set up our Pi so that it can use SPI, we're gonna press the down arrow to get to interfacing options again, then press enter. And inside interfacing options, you wanna press the down arrow until you get to the SPI option, press enter. Press enter to select yes, and you're gonna install SPI. The screen will flash, press enter at okay, and you've done the installation. Now we can go ahead and select finish. So if you press the right arrow twice until finish is selected, then press enter and we'll leave the configuration tool. Now we have a little bit more to install in Python to make sure that it can communicate with anything we're gonna to attach to the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go back to the first tab that we had with instructions there for installing CircuitPython on the Pi. We're gonna scroll down to where it says install Python libraries. We skipped over a little bit that we're not gonna need for our projects here. And now let's select the next command here that starts with pip3, it's install rpi.gpio and this will just expand what we can do with the python programming language so we can communicate with more things that we're going to attach to our raspberry pi again we only have to do this once so highlight that line command c return to the terminal command v to paste it in and press enter to install those python libraries now once that installation happens return to the web page we're going to highlight this line that starts with pip3 and goes to adafruit blinka Copy that with a command C, go back over to the terminal, command V, press enter to install the final libraries we need in order to use CircuitPython on our Raspberry Pi. Now we're gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi so all these updates take effect. So simply type in sudo space reboot, press enter. Now your Raspberry Pi will take about 30 seconds to restart. So wait just a little bit. And then when it looks like your Pi is done restarting, you can go ahead and type in your SSH command, or you can press the up arrow to go through the previous commands that you've entered until you get to your SSH command. And again, this should read SSH space Pi at whatever the name of your Pi is, minus pybot.local, press enter. If you happen to get any um, error messages in here, which just says that the Pi isn't recognized, just type in yes and press enter you're likely to not get that message. I'm getting it because I'm using multiple Raspberry Pis on my Mac. You will be asked to type in your password and press enter. When we get to the prompt, we're ready to actually enter a Python program that we're gonna to use to test everything out that we've just installed. Now return to the web page on installing CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi and scroll down. You'll see right underneath where it says that's pretty much it. Now you're ready to test. There is a Python program. Now that's this text right here. Now the Python program that we're going to create is gonna be called blinkatest.py. Blinka, by the way, is the purple Python mascot for Adith Fruit Circuit Python. And so what I'm gonna do here is highlight blinkatest.py. And this line suggests that we create this program using Nano. So we already know how to do that. Uh, I'm copying blinkatest.py, just the name. 
going back over to the terminal, typing in nano space, I'm gonna paste in blinkattest.py, press enter, and we're creating a new blank file that says blinkattest.py. Now return to your browser and the installation instructions. I'm gonna click this very convenient copy code link in the upper right hand corner. It indicates that I've copied the code, it's now on my clipboard. So I'm gonna go back into the terminal. I'm gonna do a command V to paste in all of the code that I just copied. And once it's in nano, I'm gonna go ahead and do a control X. I'm asked if I wanna save, I'll type in a capital Y press enter after the file name, and then I leave nano and I'm back at the prompt. And to execute any file in Python, we simply type in Python 3 to use the latest version of Python, space, and then the name of our Python program. So I'm gonna head back to the browser here. You can see that it says Python 3 space blinkatest.py. That's the file we've just created. I'm gonna copy that. You can certainly type it right in if you'd like. I'm gonna to return to the terminal paste that in, press enter, my program runs. We can see everything checks out okay, there are no errors. Congratulations, you got CircuitPython installed. We're ready to build a robot.